everyone, welcome back to Ormsby Farm. My name is Casey. So it is week two of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And I'm so excited to sit down and talk about what we did this week. I'm actually in my office shooting it today because I'm shooting some other videos. Um, but yeah, so let's get into the intro so we can talk about the food that I did for week two. <music> All right, so it is week two of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. And I first of all, just wanna thank everybody that has watched my video, that it's almost at 3,000 views is crazy to me. It is totally crazy, and I totally love this challenge, and I hope that you're enjoying what I'm putting out there, and I hope you try some of these recipes. And remember, the recipes are always gonna be in the description box. Um, when I put it out there, give me a minute, because I, I edit it on my cell phone and then put it on my big computer to get everything like links and stuff in there. Um, but one thing is I won't have a lot of the videos because my cell phone sucks and deleted most of all my videos and pictures. So I had to take it back out um, and reshoot pictures. And of course I had to go into town. So that is why if you follow me on Instagram, they all come out at the same time because I had to re-pull stuff out as I was shooting this video, take pictures and post. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it with day, what was it? It was day, let's see, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Okay, day 7 of Every Bit Counts Challenge, and it was okra. Now, this was the only one that I had actually saved on my computer, so I have videos that I'll be showing here. Basically, the uh, Clemson Spineless has done so well this year, and um, because I only had a couple plants, I've just been pulling those and dicing them up. And we've been putting them in a freezer bag. Now, the reason I do it like this instead of like pickling it and that kind of stuff is because this is the easiest way to add it to soups. And when I do fried okra, I take it frozen, y'all, and I put it right into the egg batter from the, well, I do a flour and then an egg and then the breading kind of stuff. And I do it straight from frozen and then I air fry it. So it's just easier. It's easier to put in the gallon Ziploc bag. And again, they've done really well this year. Um, Mom is the only one that really does the okra around here. Um, so this is definitely enough for her throughout the year and she's eaten a lot of fresh. Um, so that was day seven. Day seven of the Every Bit Counts Challenge challenge was the fried or the okra. Alrighty, so heading on to day eight. Now, listen, all I got was the video of showing it. I wish I could somehow find how I did. Uh, I can't even remember if I saved it onto the computer because again, all of the videos magically disappeared off of my iPhone because I haven't backed it up. So way to go, Casey. Woohoo! Um, but day eight, I made cheese dip in a jar. Now, before you come for me, this is not canned. This is actually just dehydrated. It's a mix that I will leave the recipe down in the description box. Um, it is a powdered cheese dip mix. And what you do is you add this. You add this much of boiling water, so a jar of boiling water. And what we did was a half of a jar of your home canned Rotel. And I canned some more Rotel later in the week. Um, and you let that sit, mix it up, bring it back up to boil, and it thickens beautifully into a, I'd compare it to kind of like a Velveeta cheese dip more than a Mexican one. It looks lighter and white, but it, it gets kind of orange. Um, and it's delicious, and you definitely want to do it as a one-time thing. Because of the butter powder in it, it doesn't refrigerate that well. It just gets more liquidy, and then the butter clumps. I guess you could probably bring it back up to a boil, but my recommendation is be a fat kid, eat the whole thing in one sitting, like I do. Okay. So, yes, day eight was the cheese dip powder in a jar. And again, it was vacuum sealed. So, boop, 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 it's sealed and it's good and it's ready to go. So day nine, um, and we've eaten some of it, so that's why I look a little uh, crazy, but it was, again, this is another one that I lost the video for, but it is our sweet potatoes, and I bought a spiraler, 
And I really bought it for our zucchinis to make zoodles and to uh, shred them better. But I tried it out and it made, um, it had a curly fry setting. And I tried it out and it works wonderfully. I will leave the link in our Amazon storefront if you're interested in one of those. Um, I put it right in here. Just like a bag of the french fries. Oh, y'all, I got gardener's nails. I've been in the garden sweating. Um, break it up. I put it in the air fryer, spray it with a little bit of oil, 417 minutes and some crispy sweet potato fries that are so good. You probably can do it um, with your regular white potatoes as well. Um, so that was day nine. Day 10, we have done this before. We did a first batch of this um, in July-ish because our tomatoes did so well this year, but it did them early. But I made another batch of our homemade V8 juice and it is delicious, it's amazing. It's the best Bloody Mary you will ever, ever have. Um, and I just did a small batch because I'm gonna put a video right here. We have so much frozen tomatoes that basically last year, if you remember, I have the tomatoes, I cut them, I core them, cut them up, put them in a Kroger bag and put them in the freezer for when I'm ready to use them. Um, and I pulled a bag out and did a small batch of the V8 juice. Um, and I put onions, I put some shredded carrots in there, I put some bell peppers, and did some salt and some seasoning and it's good. So this is good. It's canned, water bath canned. I'll leave all the information in the description box on how to can this V8 juice. And it is a recipe, a certified recipe. Like I said in my last um, video, make sure that you are doing recipes that, and canning your recipes that have been certified and have been tested. Blase, so fun, so for, and so forth. So forth. Yikes. Um, so that was day 10. Day 11 was kind of like a dual one. So let me tell you, I am addicted to my friend Alicia from Country Mama Musings video on scalloped funeral potatoes. It's meal in the jars. I do them all the time, all the time. And I had so much squash this year that I decided to can some dehydrated or um, seal some dehydrated squash scallop, like coins um, and put them in a jar, vacuum seal it for when I was ready to make dun, 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 cheesy squash casserole in a jar. So basically, y'all, I cannot believe how my gardener nails, it is just crazy me looking a hot mess on here. But basically all it is, it's going to be um, your cheese sauce is a scallop cream based sauce and some seasoning. And then of course my squash. It's sealed, so it is good. I will leave the recipe in the box, um, the bio box, but all you do with this, literally all you do to rehydrate all of this stuff is you pour this in there, uh, to double the amount that the, the food is. So you got this one pint, you want two pints of boiling water and let it sit for about an hour. It will rehydrate, you cook at 350 for about 26 minutes. Um, I'll put that down below. It's great, but I did these, but I also stocked up on that scallop sauce. So this is like a mixture of uh, um, milk powder and sour cream powder and chicken bouillon and um, seasonings and a secret ingredient. And I will leave Alicia's video in my description box and up here so that you can go and make you some scalloped cream sauce. And I didn't even seal it, y'all. I just have it with this jar because I use it so much, but also attached to it is her scalloped potatoes. And all you do is you substitute the squash in here for the potatoes. Um, and this is kind of more of like a keto friendly um, kind of dish. So that was 10. 11, 11 was I made homemade tortillas. You know, I did last year, um, or was that 12? I think this is 12. I'm gonna type it on the thing, y'all. I'm get all my days mixed up. And I try to put them like in order right here so I don't forget, but what was it? Seven, eight, nine, 10. Yep, the squash casserole was 11, so this is 12. And just like I do with my bread, I like to stock up for a couple months. Um, it's easy, it's convenient, it's a way to do it. Um, and we have Mexican food here at Ormsby Farm once a week. So I always like to stock up on cheese dip powder, salsa, and homemade tortillas. And they freeze beautifully and reheat, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Again, don't have the video, magically disappeared. Um, but I make them, I will leave the recipe in the description box. Um, it's super easy um, to make these. They're not gonna be perfectly round like you get at the store. I mean, you can literally look at, see if I can, can you see it? Can you see how wonderful my circle is? Not! But they are so delicious. Again, they're super easy to make. Um, freeze it and then you can reheat it and use it. I also use these y'all and I'll cut them up and oil both sides and salt it and put them in the air fryer or the oven to make homemade tortilla chips. I mean, they're so versatile. Put them in the freezer and then you have them stocked up for a couple months on busy days when you're in the garden, as you can tell with my nails. Um, and you just wanna come in, throw an, a good homemade meal together. This is what to do. Cheese powder, that, and this next thing that I'm gonna show you. I did another batch of homemade Rotel. You know that jar, I'm gonna leave the thing right here. Again, I had a lot more of the tomatoes in the freezer. And all this is, is diced tomatoes. And then you get some garlic, and I put jalapeno peppers, uh, cord seeded, it's just the, the skin of the jalapeno. And I put it in my uh, food processor until it's kind of like a paste. And then I mix that in to the Rotel. I bring that mixture up to a boil and then I seal it in the canning. Canning process, water bath canning, all the information will be down below. Again, um, make sure you do your research on looking up the recipes that are certified so forth. But yes, this was day 13. This is what we did today. Um, right before I went out to the garden, uh, we got this together. This is a simple, simple, quick one because I mean, this was like after church, after um, pulling stuff out of the garden, whipped this together. And this is great to add to soups, to the cheese dip, uh, on top of nachos. I mean, it's really, really delicious. During a football game, throw this in with some hamburger meat and some of your cheese dip to make a cheese dip hamburger kind of like dip. Um, so this was absolutely wonderful. But y'all, thank you so much for tuning in to week two. This is going so great. I hope you are joining in. If you are, make sure you leave it in the comment section below that you're joining in. Tag the Every Bit Counts Challenge hashtag. I'll leave that on there. And make sure to tag Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead. If you haven't seen her channel, first of all, where have you been? Um, but her channel is amazing. And she does this every August. And she does some other great collabs too. And I will link her channel in here as well. So y'all, Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're liking and subscribing um, on this journey of preserving for the winter. And I know I had some funny comments from my Atlanta friends, but preserving for the winter doesn't mean that we live in Alaska, okay? It just means that I am preserving when the garden is not doing well. Um, but also, make sure you're following me on social media. I post daily on the Every Bit Counts Challenge on the Instagram, and the Instagram goes over to the Facebook. So Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, threads, I think that's all of them, at Ormsby Farm. And until next video, thanks for stopping by my office, and I hope you're blessed, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, y'all. I'm coming home.